Hello guys, welcome back. Now in today's video we're gonna go over this post made six days ago by Gordon. For those of you that don't know, Gordon is um, the Pridwin guy for Reverse 1999. He, he is the one behind changing the uh, the tier list in Pridwin for Reverse. And the one that gets all the translation um, translation from CN of the kits and like uh, picks them back, like corrections here and there, like, you know, that guy. So he made a post talking about the meta shift from 1.6 plus, And then he goes over the CN buffs. So uh, we're going to read the, the main part of the of the post. We're not going to read everything. Don't worry about it because the rest is CN characters buffed and we already talked about this in the other meta uh, video that I made on CN standard buffs. If you want to check that, I yeah, will link this in the description so you can check this written version or you can watch the video on uh, on my with my insight during uh, my thoughts during the reading uh, of the all the buffs, okay? Now, first of all, uh, Gordon made this post and the point is how does the 1.6 2.0 affect the perceived meta and what should we expect going forward? Okay, there are a couple of points that I don't agree fully and we're going to talk about those, but I will try to read more or less the main the main part which is this. So, what should we expect, be expecting going forward from 1.6 2.0? Many things, but first I want to address Pridwin's current roster of S-plus characters. Winsong and Lucy are S-plus, damage dealers, Isolde for support, Thut Fairy, Vila and Kakania for survival units. Uh, also, it starts with this kind of troubles, uh, doubles as an information trade that was going on 1.2, uh, 2.1 raids, the CNC are currently an update on situation, given Global has now found itself at the start of landslide of Kirk characters, an avalanche that started rolling to 1.6, but only really hit the sweet spot during 1.8. Also, usually, I don't know the front, okay. Uh, so, 1.6, I wouldn't say, besides Jun and Su, Agetian is, uh, was good, so... Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. 1.6 was uh, Chu Getian, and then he sold it, Marcus, and then Villa wins song. And you can see, you can see the spike, the um, the chart going up. Villa wins song, Lucy Kakania, right? And then after Kakania, it drops tremendously on Jay. But we'll talk about that as well. Okay. I agree with most of the points, by the way. But I there, there's a per, certain points that I disagree, and I want to clarify because people are going to take some of these uh inform th these informations as okay that's how it is right but you need to look at it with a different perspective that that, that i will try to bring today okay now how will this change? Referring to this S plus tier characters. Personally I see longevity in Winsong, Vila, uh, Vila and Kakania only. So it doesn't see longevity for Lucy. This may be a shocker considering well the overwhelming power of all, of all these characters, but hear me out. A new record in the darkness of the Abyss fight was recently set in CN using Winsong, Mercuria, and Kankania and Vila. This record was 17 million damage, naturally set with all characters P5. This is a concrete showcase of this is a concrete showcase of Winsong beating Lucy on a stage where AoE and mass damage is favored and actually heavily advantaged. Given the strategy is to kill mobs, Lucy for Lucy's forte. Yeah, it is. Uh, every time a mob dies, Lucy uh, does free laser for everybody. Uh, Follow-up attack for free. This doesn't mean Lucy is dead, of course. 70 million damage is completely unnecessary and only a hollow flex, but it does grant another argument against Winsong Deniers. Now, I don't know who... Where are the Winsong deny? Who? Who's deny? Who's saying the Winsong is not good? I have been saying the Winsong was stronger than Chu for like multiple months now. Uh, after I picked her up in CN for the first time when she came out, I immediately recognized, yo, this, th this thing is insane. This kit is crazy. There's no way you can, against a 1v1, there's no way you can uh, do anything about it, right? You can do the same thing with you. There's no way, right? Especially P5, right? We're talking about all P5. And this is where I am, I'm, I'm wondering, is he, does he mean against a Lucy P5? 
with the perfect Lucy team. He didn't mention this, and I'm wondering, is this a correct comparison? Is he is he kind of cherry picking or not? That I am I'm actually uh, asking because it doesn't specify what like you need when you are comparing a character. Sadly, you need to specify a lot of things, and he did for Wind Song. But what does it mean? Is it's do, it's doing better? It's beating Lucy. What is beating Lucy on? What what is what is Wind Song beating Lucy on? What damage? Uh, is Lucy using the is Lucy P five? R15 with like uh, le level, uh, whatever, whatever it is that, like 6 frequency or whatever. I forgot the max frequency. Uh, are they maxed? Uh, do they have the best in slot team for them? Maybe they are. I, maybe it's implied. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering that. Now, no one is, by the way, no one is denying Winsong, so this is not even an argument. I agree with him. Uh, if any, if anyone is is saying that Winsong is not good or not future proof, you are, uh, you are trolling. You're throwing. Uh, you don't know what you're talking about. And maybe, maybe check the kit of the character. Maybe play. Maybe uh, watch a streamer like me or someone else that is streaming. So you, uh, maybe Twitch.tv forward slash Jagazin content or Reverse Ninety Nine. Uh, can help you understand a little more wind song guide coming soon in uh, like a week or whatever. Now, the point here that I want to say is, uh, yeah, this this guy these guys are insane, and this is a little bit of a cherry picking. Let's move on. Initial pushback about against wind song didn't actually come from wind song versus Lucy, but for uh, yeah, true, it was wind song versus Ching and C. I did have. A little bit of pushback when I said Wind Song is better than Chun Yun Su. People were saying, "No, you're you're insane," uh, but it was clear you you could see it. You could see it before the new tuning was released. Wind Song sometimes struggled to set up for the big ultimate, and then players not optimizing her kit resulted in a skewed AD or the power. Wind Song beat Chun Yun Su in all aspects, even in short fights. Be uh, this is because t t 30 round cycle isn't all that Winston can do. There are different strategies such as 5 round cycles using for rehabilitation for short content, but ultimate cycles. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In addition, Winsong non-limited beats Chunyun's limited. That means nothing. Uh, I mean, yeah, maybe. Okay, I, I guess what it is. I guess I guess I know what it means. It means like, oh, it's supposed to be a limited character. Limited character equals stronger than the others because it's limited. Two patches after her release. Now we have Argus non limited on the horizon, who visually speaking looks like a reality carry, releasing two patches after Lucy limited. Uh, okay, this is just speculation, like for fun. XD lol lamau. Uh, this is not going to happen uh, because Lucy is not a normal character. This is never going to happen, and this is where we a little bit diverge from the the opinions here. In my in my opinion, Lucy is very future proof because of the fact that the, that whether you like it or not we are shackled into the afflatus advantage and disadvantage if you're fighting the wrong boss yes you can probably brute force it if you have a crazy healer and you are like uh trying to not die and in pre-healing so you don't get killed but the boss is dealing to you 30% more damage, and you know how these uh, raid bosses are, are getting becoming crazier and crazier during the rounds, right? They, they get the perma buff, undispellable, and they get, they get tankier and do more damage infinitely, basically. The more you kill them, the more they get stronger. So if you also are of the wrong Aflatus, you are going to get destroyed one shot immediately, very early. So... Having a character that is able to bypass this and to also force, force after the ultimate, the Aflatus advantage, even though technically you don't have it, uh, I feel like this is uh, future proof enough, at least equally as future proof as Windsong, and it should have been included in this first uh, longevity that Gordon is uh, seeing. I don't know why is he not seeing this. It, it somehow feels like. She's going to be uh, beat by somebody like Argus re releasing. I don't think Argus is going gonna, is gonna to empower Creep Lucy at all. Uh, to For Argus to beat Lucy would be for Argus, like Argus would have to be bypassing something as well. 
Like if she bypasses the defenses, let's say, um, a boss has like SS defense reality. And after, like when she does the ult, that shot bypasses and, and acts like it doesn't have any defense. Like D, D minus defense or reality. That's still good, but the concept of the character such as Lucy, it's transcending on all on multiple points of view, multiple scenarios, while Argus or Winsong, they are excelling in one thing for their element. So in my opinion, this is this cannot be real. This is impossible to be real because we are talking about a, a flatus oriented characters, a character or and characters against a intelligence which is already a niche element that is not weak to anything and can be forcibly uh, put into a status of advantage against every element after the ultimate. So uh, I don't think it's uh, possible to do to do this, especially Lucy P5, right? So this is what I think. Let's move on. Uh, there is, uh, of course, literally zero concrete evidence to say Argus will creep Lucy. I, if anything, I think Argus is going to creep Jessica. So that's going to be the main problem for everybody, in my opinion. Uh, but it would be very funny. All in all, I view Winsong as having more longevity than Lucy, simply based on how much burst she can output in her various different playstyles. Sure. On yeah, but we are we are observing and we are doing this comparison under a vacuum. We are, we are tunnel visioning into just damage dealt and not value as a character in your team. All that people are going to do, especially non-whales and non-spending, non-dolphins and like barely spending any money, maybe getting the, uh, the main uh, monthly pass people, the casual guys, the people like me that don't give a fuck after you get triple S or even if you get double S and you, you're not, you can't be bothered to do, to do it again. You just st stick on double S because you can't be bothered to do triple. Those are the people that we need to think about because those are the people that play the game. The whales are just going to P5 everybody and they're going to shit on every content. Every content is, uh, uh, is irrelevant in terms of difficulty and they're just trying to flex as much as they can. So, But they also have every character, so they don't have to choose anything. So who's meta, who's not meta? I don't think a, whale, a giga whale that is able to P5 every character is going to care about which character is now power crept. They're just going to use that character. And they're going to use like, okay, who 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 is triple S? Who is S plus 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 plus? Who's T? Who's T minus one? Who's T zero? This 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 this. Okay, you P five P five P five P five. And there it is, fifty million billion damage. Uh, get this flex right. Uh, purple purple score in raids. Like okay, but that's that that's like two different two different words. The words that we care about is the word that is also caring about a value for a character. So Lucy has a value, not just damage dealt, but also as where you can put Lucy, which is everywhere. In any scenario, you can just put Lucy and solve it. You can double DPS with Lucy as well if you really if you're like a new player and you have uh, you don't have many supports but you have two DPSs because you wanted to you needed to pick up Lucy and then you picked up Winsong as well right and you're fighting a star but you need more supports just put Lucy there and instead of having support you have more damage and she's going to act like she is um, has a, an advantage towards uh, mineral right so I feel like this we are going a little bit off topic here or we are being a little bit too focused, too narrowed vision into the damage dealt, okay? But Winsong is an extremely powerful character, That no, and I'm not denying that. I agree with that, and I have been saying it for a long time. Moving on to the uh, rest, we're not gonna uh, too much... This is the end, basically. Isolde is a tougher sub subject. We, if we had put Kakani in the support category on Pridwen, she likely would have either joined Isolde in S+, as the buffer half, uh, to the Opera Singers debuffer, or she would have pushed this all the down to S tier. The thing is, while it's all extremely good, she just isn't su isn't super beneficial to our current best damage dealers. Uh, that is true. 
both of them can use her, yes, but Kakania is just way more universally applicable and has more potential. That is true. For damage output to offensive support, that little therapist does okay. Uh, but hold on to the stuff for a moment and discuss an elephant in the room, Tooth Fairy. Uh, now, this is where I start agreeing, right? I disagree on the Lucy stuff because I think we're kind of missing stuff, some information, some values. Uh, this is where I start agreeing. It's all that I agree. We all that is good and all, but we are we are using a character that is uh, doing a bunch of things here and there, but is not giving a lot. And what what she is giving is ne negligible. For example, the burn stacks are not always going to help. They're not always going to help. So all of the burn stuff. And having to apply burn, and if you're using Vila, then all of those burn stats, for example, are not going to not going to be applied. You're kind of going against what uh, Isolde wants to do. So she is giving all the debuffs and stuff, but she is doing a K damage. She is debuffing, but when you are trying to make a team you only have four characters so if one character is a dps and one character is a, one character is a healer now you need to decide which one are you putting in and since there is a lot of currently s plus character in in buff uh, in my opinion i don't i don't know what Priduin is doing right now but i feel like uh, six someone like six is still like at the top of the uh, of the the food chain still an apex character uh so you would just blast a six there just just for free and then whoever is the most uh benefit for you in the team and most of the time is not is all there unless you are playing spatodia right someone that relies on on a heavy burn stacks on the enemy so i agree it's still a pretty good character, but not an S+, plus, right? I agree with that. Both of them can use her, yes, but Kakania is just way more universally applicable. That is true, even though she is um, she is a plant, right? But still, a you can still use her in the wrong flatters and she'll still do fine, right? She is, uh, she's going to tank for everybody a little bit. She's going to store that uh, into her entropy, whatever the fuck it's called. I forgot. It's E something, whatever. Uh, and then it's, once that one fills, it's going to blast the uh, Giga Genesis damage to everybody uh, and, and all the stuff. I don't know fully her kit. I will look more into it whenever I get it in global, for sure. And uh, and um, I'll make the guide, right? Whenever I make the guide, I will go study more of the character and I will know more. But uh, I know more or less in Kagania, I, I already agree, right? So, you know. Uh, the elephant in the room, Tooth Fairy. Tooth Fairy. So the, the point the, here is that Tooth Fairy will eventually be power crept, and that is fine. So that point, I agree. Uh, characters such as Vila are becoming more important and more valued compared to Tooth Fairy. For now, for us in global, uh, Tooth Fairy is still fine. And even if she even if she becomes power crept, it will it will happen in a little bit for us in global and maybe like seven eight months for now so you still have a lot of time to use tooth fairy even if she gets power crept power creeping a healer is not as a catastrophical tragedy as power creeping a dps because a dps now you don't use it anymore right but power creeping a healer means that you are using this new healer because it's giving more besides the healing and it's not because that other guy is not healing enough the previous guy because tooth fairy heals a lot she does free buffs she has a uh, uh, free cleanse for limbo you still need to do healers but sometimes maybe other characters are more valued for example i'm going to say something and no no uh, nobody ever talks about fucking medicine pocket i think medicine pocket is an excellent healer and almost offers as much value as Tooth Fairy. If if their healing was a little bit higher, they would have been T0, S+, plus, whatever, with Tooth Fairy. Because you have a stun uh, that also heals and the ult. You have a debuff that can enable many DPS's damage because it's just, it's just a, like straight up damage taken plus percentage. So it's really... Like, I don't know. And then you have the healing. Right? So... Maybe maybe if they rework Medicine Pocket and they and they gave, they gave them... 
uh, a little bit more healing and then they rework uh, their insight. That would be maybe astronomical. That would be insane. I would love to uh, to play them more. But yeah, so I agree with Tooth Fairy. It will eventually be power crept, but it's not a big deal. You can easily skip the new power creeping character healing because you don't need to do much, right? But you would want a healer that does more than just healing. So in which content you are getting chunked. If there is a content when you're getting chunked, then maybe the Tooth Fairy is better because she has a very, very high healing. Otherwise, you don't need that, right? And you would rather tra trade a little bit more of uh, uh, healing for some more values, such as Vila buffing and do dealing all that. Now, many have already considered dropping Tooth Fairy down to S tier. I agree. Uh, but not now though, in, in CN, sure, Sh soon she will go to S tier. Because of Vila, since uh, Tooth Fairy isn't really used in raids anymore, it doesn't matter. I don't know what the fuck is this giga emphasis on raids. Why do you guys care so much about raids? I guess it's a way to flex your characters, but... For what? It's not, there's no ranking, who gives a fuck if you do SSS or double S? You're gonna miss like what, two materials? Who gives a fuck? Uh, all the casual people are not gonna care about getting triple S, or if they get triple S, they're not gonna care about doing higher score. If maybe for friends to 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 flex in Discord on my Discord, you can join and flex. Uh, but I don't know, like I don't find this like having like min maxing raids. I don't feel min maxing raids above, uh, like besides getting triple S as a something important that you need to care about in a reverse and so your character pools are uh, reflecting the, your your need to do raids crazy like to do like three millions of raids like i don't know uh tooth fairy isn't really using raids anymore maybe i mean sure if you have vila you don't use tooth fairy unless vila is heavily targeted somehow but i don't know uh, I, that's, this is true, but it doesn't matter. And this is a little niche. It is like a niche in a niche in a niche in a niche. Because it's like tryharding people that have a lot of characters that are min-maxing, that are going beyond triple S, like, and then they're not using Tooth Fairy. Okay, who gives a fuck, right? But it is true. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, but I, just, I say that, but it has no value in my opinion. You can still, you're still fine with Tooth Fairy for like the next three years. Next three years, well, don't worry about it. At some point, the myth of the incredible Tooth Fairy is proven, and honestly, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. It's just been uh, top tier for, and then it's not like she's going from S plus to F. She's just dropping one tier, and who cares, right? For a healer, especially. Uh, and this is the last point. That this, this is what this is what I do all the time, and what I do, uh, and how I play my games after right i am a meta guy in the sense that i have, have fun when i can clear easily content without stressing too much without even trying and, I, and the content gets cleared even the, the end game i mean once i reach that sta status with my account so i pull characters I, and i calculate okay if i get this character then i can do that so i can i need to get this 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 i don't care if they're ugly or if i don't like them or if they uh if they're not a waifu if they're a zbando i don't care i get this this character this character this character so i can clear after i get to that point that i'm clearing everything now what i'm doing is I am getting the characters that are cool, that are furthering uh, some, that are, that are like focused on uh, fun mechanics or cool mechanics, niche mechanics, mechanics that are that are that are that are crazy, like the moving around, like switching the the position of your characters that some bosses did and Pioneer uh, uh, is doing in CN or crazy mega dot coms with Tuesday. Uh, like I like theory crafting when it comes to new stuff or Jay retaliating every time he takes damage. I think those are cool. And this is where I feel like the majority of the people are going to agree and everybody's going to agree together. They're going to be like, yeah, true. And which is like Gordon says, fun. You need to have fun. It's a game. 
So after you clear everything and you comfortably clear every content in the game, and you have you have all the characters, all the tools uh, at your disposal. Now what you need to do with your tools and to whenever you buy more is to get fun tools, something that enables you to have more fun in the game than you had before. So here where here's our here's when all the characters are coming that are like kind of weird and they add wacky mechanics like august with like oh if you're if you're in front of me you deal more damage if behind me you deal, deal less you you take less damage and pioneer moving and the character like hp drain and retaliation every time you get hit uh kakania storing uh, storing that that's that, those are new mechanics and all the mechanics that could come back eventually freeze petrify uh more dots dot full dot comp only with tuesday and maybe some new characters in the futures in the future so we'll see right so that is it i don't want to yap too much overall i agree with most of what it says the only thing i disagree is uh the lucy stuff i don't think lucy is that bad i don't think lucy is going to a big power crept by argus at all i don't think lucy's game is not future proof I, if anything lucy is one of the most future proof characters and if you can between the two characters should i pull lucy or should i pull wind song in my opinion in global if you're not a spender if you're free to play you should pull lucy first and then get wind song whenever she comes back okay that's what i think you should do because winsong can excel in star but then when you need anything else you're going to do like now what right because you don't have lucy but if you have lucy you can just put lucy everywhere and it's going to uh, she's going to help you everywhere you need her right uh, but yeah, so let me know what you think in the comments. I will link this in the description so you can read it at your own pace and also go over all the uh, CN changes. I made a video about it, but if you want to read it, it's here. And let me know in the comments what you think about all these topics and uh, what are your plans going ahead. Okay, so thank you for watching and see you next time.